Hello, welcome back to a new video. So recently I watched the brand new Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and as an avid fan of Guardians of the Galaxy and Marvel movies in general, I knew I just had to watch this movie. Unfortunately, so far it's been kind of bland, boring, uninspiring and also a bit lacking in luster. I just feel like the whole movie was a complete mess from the beginning until the end. The story didn't really make any sense and they were full of plot holes. So the basic concept of the story is that the raccoon thing called Rocket gets injured and basically it's like his origin story so the entire movie revolves around showing flashbacks of his childhood when he was born and when he was young and then switching to current scenes of the team the guardians trying to rescue him and fight the bad guy so the bad guy is a complete joke of a villain he's this black guy who is called the high evolutionary and his thing is he evolves things and creates creatures and he's super powerful and people fear him because for some reason he's able to control gravity so he has the power to fling people around and crush them using the power of gravity it's kind of a lame power it's very unoriginal and not very creative and the guy is just a complete moron he's supposed to be like this genius that knows how to evolve creatures and create the perfect beings but he just screams like a lunatic when he gets mad and just has like tantrum rages like a complete child all of the time so the movie starts off in the home base of the guardians and this guy flying through space I forgot his name, something like The Warlock, but he looks like this derpy version of Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. And he's got golden skin and he just flies through space. And his mission is to retrieve the raccoon called Rocket to bring him back to the black guy, the main villain, the high evolutionary. So he smashes through the window and injures Rocket and then he has a fight one-on-one -on -one versus all of the Guardians. Completely destroys the entire crew until the end when he gets stabbed in the back by, I think her name's Nebula. So it's kind of like an exhibition of all of the crew's powers. So if you're not familiar with the movies, you get a taste to see what each of the Guardians are able to do ability-wise. And it's just kind of funny because each of them do have unique abilities and have some kind of special power. Apart from Chris Pratt, who is the leader of the Guardians, he doesn't seem to be able to do anything apart from roll around and shoot his pistols. So they temporarily beat back the derpy looking Ron Weasley character and he flies away. But this kind of sets up the whole story. Now that Rocket is injured, they need to find out how to heal him. And then they start doing all these flashbacks of Rocket's childhood, how he was created, his sad past with his friends in the cage and how he lost them and how he needs to get revenge. I can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to make me feel all sad and sympathetic for Rocket. Oh look, he lost all his friends. Oh look, he had a tough childhood. Hood. We're rooting for you, please, Guardians, help him. I am not so easily emotionally manipulated, thank you very much. They also show how evil and bad the High Evolutionary is because he's using these poor innocent creatures to try and create them into these perfect beings for his new utopia world. So the first main action scene is they leave on the spaceship and they arrive at this kind of biologically living organism which is also a space station which is kind of a weird dumb idea so they infiltrate the space station by cutting a hole into its flesh and then just squeezing through a hole and for some reason the security systems doesn't seem to detect this and they manage to sneak in the security team on board of this organism have the dumbest looking armor I've ever seen. They have like this light brown, really bulky, puffy looking marshmallow sort of armor and it looks so stupid. I don't know who designed this, but they need to be fired. All of the security team on this organism look like big fat teddy tubbies or that Michelin Man tire mascot thing. They look so ridiculous. So they need to find this special ball thing which contains information about Rocket and how to heal him. So they just go around shooting everyone and then Chris Pratt and that green skin Gamora character who used to be his girlfriend in the previous movies but now I'm pretty sure she died in like the first movie but for some reason she's back but this time she doesn't remember anything she's like a different person. She and Chris Pratt are constantly bickering because Chris is like oh boohoo we used to be in love now you don't remember me and then she's like oh I don't care so then they start arguing about killing people. Gamora wants to go in guns blazing and just shoot everyone but Chris keeps saying no we don't do that we are guardians we don't kill anyone but then later on in the movie Chris just easily murders a load of henchmen without thinking twice about it. So they grab the special ball thing to save Rocket and they cause a load of chaos shoot a load of people blow up the whole place and then fly out. 
They plug in the special ball thing, thinking with this they can save Rocket, but oh no, some of the code has been deleted, and they can't save Rocket, and it turns out one of the fat guys with a special metal thing on his head probably has the code that they need stored inside of it. So they go to the special utopia world, which is called the Counter Earth, which is like a replica version of Earth, which is created by the black guy, the high evolving guy, I forgot his name, evolutionary. So they go to him to find the fat guy with the metal thing on his head to find the passcode to save Rocket. And on this planet, the Counter Earth, it looks like Earth and it's inhabited by a load of human-like animal creatures which have been created by the black guy and it just looks so ridiculous it's like they've landed on sesame street they've got all of these human-like things with really dumb looking pig heads and bird heads they all just look so stupid and ridiculous you can't take it seriously at all so the plan to find the fat guy with the metal thingy on his head is to basically walk into the main headquarters of the main villain the black guy and just shoot everyone. Chris Pratt takes Groot and Nebula to the headquarters place and leaves the rest behind. And Gamora is on the ship alone, which is kind of weird because why would they leave Gamora on the ship alone when she obviously doesn't want to be there and she doesn't really seem like she's very cooperative and she doesn't even know how to fly the ship. Chris Pratt arrives at the headquarters and they just do like a simple security check. They don't let Nebula in because her whole body is a weapon. They do a security check to make sure they're not carrying any weapons and then they let them in and they have a small quick chats with the High Evolutionary and then conveniently the High Evolutionary just walks off to go and do some errands maybe he went to the toilet and then during the five minutes that he walks off Groot suddenly pulls out like 20 guns that he was hiding inside of his body which is so weird because how come the security scan thing didn't detect the guns maybe it can't pass through wood it doesn't make any sense and then Chris Pratt and Groot just start murdering everyone in the room there was like 10 or 15 henchmen and they just get blasted I thought earlier Chris Pratt was saying we don't kill anyone after they finish murdering everyone, they just dive at the fat guy with the metal thing in his head who's just standing there. And they grab him and they just jump out of the window of the headquarters, which is now flying up into space. And they just grab him and start diving towards the surface of the planet. And then the Groot just magically grows wings. So the three of them are plummeting towards the ground and Chris is holding on to the big fat guy and kind of like holding him down so when they hit the ground, guess who's going to be squished? The fat guy. So they smash into the ground, fat guy first, completely killing him I guess. His back and spine would have been shattered from that impact. And now the fat guy is kind of underwater in this puddle and then Chris just whips out a knife and cuts the metal thing out of the guy's skull. It's kind of brutal, don't you think? I thought Chris Pratt's character was like, oh, we got to save people, we don't kill anyone. And you just murdered the guy, broke his back and then stabbed him in the skull with a knife and cut this thing out. So they get the password thing inside of the metal thing from the guy's head, they plug it into the special ball thing, now they have the missing code that they can now use to save Rocket. And it works, there's like a sad little scene where he nearly dies and sees his friends going to heaven, and then he regains consciousness and he's back and he's fine and everything's great. But now they have to go back to the headquarters because the other members of the Guardians went into the headquarters thinking they're going in there to save Chris when actually they jumped out the window earlier. So now they have to go back to the headquarters to save Drax, uh, the weird alien bug face girl and Nebula and also save all the children and the experiments on the headquarters and defeat the black guy. So there's a lot of fighting and there's a pretty cool fight scene where the Guardians face off against a bunch of the security team. And yeah, it's a pretty cool action scene. It's very violent and they completely destroy these guys and the creatures, which makes me think again, wait, I thought you guys don't kill people, but you just completely murdered everyone in this corridor in a very brutal way. And then for some reason, Rocket ends up on his own and he's in the area where his friends were caged up when he was a kid. And then he faces off against uh, the High Evolutionary. They have a one-on-one. -on -one. He gets slammed around a bit by the gravity power, but then he uses his magic gravity boots and then shoots the High Evolutionary with his gun a few times. And then the rest of the Guardians appear and then they all beat up the High Evolutionary guy and he's basically unconscious. And Rocket is contemplating whether he should shoot the guy and just kill him, but then he goes... No, we don't do that. We're guardians. We don't kill people. After they literally just murdered like 20 people of the security team. It's just so silly. They want to make the good guys seem good because they spared his life. I mean, they had no problem just murdering a load of insignificant henchmen and security guards. 
but they don't want to kill the main bad guy who is responsible for millions of deaths and all of this suffering. What, were they just going to let him get away and let him survive so he can maybe come back again next time with an even worse horrible plan? So the massive headquarters spaceship is now exploding as the Guardians of the Galaxy's home base spaceship crew arrive in a massive kind of skull, which was a pretty cool scene. And then they start trying to save all of the experiments and animals and all the little children. And as they're all running, jumping from the headquarters ship onto the good guy's home base ship, Chris Pratt is the last one and he starts running frantically and he makes this leap of faith trying to reach back to the home base ship to his friends. And he doesn't quite make it and he just floats around in space and starts freezing up. His face starts bloating as if his body's going to explode. And then you think, okay, so Chris is dead? So they try and trick you into thinking he's dead, make you feel sad. And then there's like close-ups of the Guardian's faces looking sad. And then, out of nowhere, magically, the derpy-looking Ron Weasley character flies Chris back into the spaceship, and somehow he survives, which is really dumb, because I'm pretty sure if you get exposed to space for that long, you're not going to survive, your body's just going to blow up and explode because of all the liquids and gas inside of the body is going to expand and try to escape from the body. At that point, there's no way he would have survived that long of being exposed to outer space. But obviously he survives because he's the main character. His bloated face returns to normal and he looks fine as if nothing happened. And the derpy Ron Weasley guy redeems himself. And now he's just magically friends with everyone, even though everything is his fault because he was the one who shot Rocket in the first place. But no one seems to care. No one's mad at him. No one's angry. They just they just say, oh, we give you a second chance because we believe in second chances. And then Chris Pratt suddenly decides to go back home to see his grandfather. And this scene is really weird because he goes back to Earth and he's in his grandfather's house. And the grandfather's house just looks like a normal house in the real world. I found it really jarring because Guardians of the Galaxy is supposed to be this sci-fi futuristic universe with all this cool technology and futuristic stuff. And then he just goes back to his grandfather's house, which looks like a, a normal house in the real world that has nothing inside of it that would make you think, oh, wait, this is from Guardians of the Galaxy. It just looks like a normal house. I think it just really ruined the immersion that you're watching a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And it's just like, oh, it's Chris Pratt in a house with an old man. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 movie. It was okay, I'd give it 6.2 out of 10. I thought it was surprisingly violent. I thought this was going to be like a kid's movie, but there was quite a lot of violent scenes and some gory scenes too, which I wasn't expecting. And Chris Pratt even says the F word 